Go on, Ruben. Go on, Ruben. Welcome to episode seven of Bike Radar Diaries, which is all about what we like to get up to here at Bike Radar. If you're new to the series, you can catch up with all the previous episodes in the playlist link, which is in the video description. And don't forget to subscribe so you can keep up to date with all our goings on. This week, with our super fancy hill climb bikes soon to be heading back, we wanted to revisit the builds one last time to discuss boutique versus mass market, which is the best. Joe opted for a very red Trekimonda, whereas Ruben went for a bike you probably won't see around very often, that's a Riley 600 SL. We're going to be discussing the merits of each of our bikes and our spec choices, and we want you to tell us which is your favourite. But this is a vote with a twist, as we've both agreed, the loser is going to ride the cheapest bike we could find from a very well-known online marketplace, we can't say which one, up the hardest hill in our area, which is a hill called Dracot. So, we're going to put up a community poll post at the same time this video goes live so that you can cast your votes. A little bit more about the Dracot climb if you haven't heard of it. It's a hill in the southwest near another famous one called Cheddar, but it is a lot harder. It's 1.9 kilometres long and there's plenty of stretches which go well over 20%. So on a very cheap, could be nasty bike, we're not sure yet. No one knows, it's going to be really tough. Oh, I'm definitely wanted to on a, on a nice light bike. So first up, the frames. It's a good starting point. So Joe, you went with that. Trekimonda, can you talk us through your frame? Yes, for starters, it's very nice and red, stands out. I like a nice colourful bike. The weight of the frame was 750 grams painted, so pretty light for a kind of, you know, a painted frame. Obviously it's a Trekimonda, it's a very famous lightweight climbing bike. Super light, super stiff, I had no issues with it. The one thing I'm not such a big fan of is the bottom bracket, which limits some of the um, cranks you can use on the bike. Ruben, he had his Riley. Yeah, so my Riley comes from a Brighton-based company, Riley Cycle Works. It's a 600 SL. It came in a very, very cool exposed carbon lacquer finish, so no paint, so there are weight savings there. However, in total, the frame was 887 grams, so a fair bit heavier than the Trek Imonda, even though it's a much smaller frame. But I'm going to say it, I preferred the understated look of the 600 SL. Another thing Ruben had going for the Riley was externally routed cables, which are really nice. But again, on a hill climb bike, I'd wager that you'd take the faff of internally routed cables to save that other 100 grams or so. Wheels are another highlight of any super premium weight weenie build. Ruben, you had a really nice pair of wheels from FSE. Yeah, they're the Evo 23T super extra light version. The extra light being the hubs, not the weight, but they are incredibly light anyway at about 887 grams. So very similar um, weight to the frame, which was quite a nice balance. Any wheel set that's called super light, extra light are gonna be Hopefully, very light. My wheels, they were Schmolke TLO, which stands for the lightest only, 30 tubular wheels. Fairly similar to Rubens in terms of their appearance, they have the same hubs, but unfortunately for me, they came in a touch heavier at 940 grams. Even though they look really nice and they were super stiff, I'm gonna have to give this one to Ruben because his were definitely lighter. One thing that the FSE wheels do have in their favor is the price. Although it's expensive wheel set at $1,900, when you compare it to super high-end ones like Lightweight or Envy's, they do represent reasonable value for money for those super premium lightweight builds. Yeah, it's a relative value for money with a big pinch of salt. One thing we both agreed on though was the group set. We both went with SRAM Red 22 Mechanical. And now, even though it's relatively old, it's still the lightest group set around for weight weenie builds. Yeah, shifts fairly well and we've got no complaints, even though electronic might be a bit better. It's a small weight penalty. One place our group sets did differ though is the power meters. Ruben, you went for a... Rotor, in power, single-sided, uh, aluminium crank, but it was incredibly stiff and I loved every second I rode it because I didn't think that any power was being lost anywhere except directly through the drivetrain. And me, I went for something really fancy, something I've wanted to use for a long time. 
that's SRM's Origin Power Meter, which is a carbon fibre crankbase power meter system. It came in a touch lighter than Rubens, I think it's around 30 grams lighter, so not too much. It's a very scary crank to put on your bike because the tolerances on those look carbon crank arms are quite tight and you're always a bit worried you're going to crack them or something like that. But once it's on, it's incredibly stiff. The power meter that Rubens used, I've also used as well. I'd say if I was going to choose, I'd go for the SRM because it's a bit lighter and once it's on, it's a fit and forget product. On the flip side to that, you might have had a fancy carbon power meter, but the rotor was not scary to fit at all. And I might have had a bit of a weight penalty and it might have only been single sided, but once I got used to the power and knew how to read it, I didn't have an issue with it. Saddles is an area where I'm going to have to give it to Ruben before we've even spoken about them. I had a really nice full carbon fibre Bontrager model. I think it was around 76 grams, but Ruben got hold of probably the lightest saddle in the world. Probably not far off half the weight of Joe's saddle at 38 grams, the Gelu K3, full carbon, very lightweight, and genuinely very comfortable saddle. True, I sat on it. It looks like it's going to feel awful, but it was, uh, it was much comfier than the modern Trasier, that's for sure. But I may have lost out on the saddle, but I think I'm going to win on the bar and stem combo. I had a aluminium 120mm stem from an Italian brand called Extralight. I'd used it the year previously. That weighed around 88 grams. My bar was an incredibly light 146 gram bar from the German carbon specialist, the same company that made my wheels, Schmolker. The total weight for the bar and stem was 234 grams, which is crazy. Yeah, and mine total 280 grams, and that was MCFK's 42mm wide road handlebar and 100mm MCFK carbon stem. Although I think we can both safely say that they performed equally well when we were racing up those hills. Yeah, we never used bar tape, but they're relatively comfortable. One thing though with components that are this light, the torque values do get a little bit scary. I think yours was down to three newton meters on the stem. If you want to have weight weaning components, you need a very good torque bench. Brakes is another area where I kind of thought I might miss out to Ruben, but now I've thought about it a bit more. I'm not so sure because while Ruben had these Kiamello Lecky 8 brakes, which are again the lightest caliper brake in existence, they were a bit difficult to work on, weren't they? I had an equally boutique product, which was the Cane Creek e-brakes, but they were a bit easy to work on despite a small weight penalty. The Lecky 8s for a set, that's for a set, is 128 grams. Now for reference, a SRAM Force caliper, just one, was the same weight as the set of the Lecky 8s. So that puts it into perspective. But they were a bit of a faff to fit, I'll be honest. I even had to go on a FaceTime call with the owner, Ted, uh, to help me fit them properly. But once they were fitted, they were great, performance was excellent, and I just wish I had more time on them because I only rode them for the national champs. And the other reason I prefer my Cane Creek EE brakes over Rubens Kia Millos is that mine were direct mount, whereas his were standard mount, and I reckon direct mount would be a bit more powerful when we were out training and kind of going back down the hills before doing another hill rep. That's the last minute. Yeah. Plate adjustment, 30 minutes before you start <laughs> racing. Pedals was another area where we had two different approaches. I switched to one of the lighter sets of speed plays, whereas you? I had my good old faithful Shimano Durace models, which I've had for about four years. I'm pretty sure they come in heavier than the speed plays, even though the speed plays have the heavier cleat and the Shimanos have the lighter cleat. But they're a pedal I really love. They give a really nice, wide, stable pedaling platform. I've tried a few different sets throughout various hill climb seasons, but I always seem to come back to the Dura Race. So despite the weight penalty, that's something I'm always going to stick with. So that's an example of Old Faithful versus something new. What do you think? And finally, we come to tyres, where I think I might just take it this time. I use 25mm Victoria Corsa Speeds. You had? I had Continental Podium TTs and a 25mm width. So despite us both having 25mm tyres, the Victoria Corsa Speeds come in quite a bit lighter than the Continentals, although obviously with the Continentals you get a bit of kind of peace of mind with puncture protection. So it's a bit of a risk, isn't it? You can go lighter and 
possibly a bit faster with a more supple tyre, but then you're going to risk puntering, or you go for something like the Podium TTs, which is still a very fast tyre, but it's going to cost you a little bit in terms of weight. I think I'm going to concede this one because the courses just look cooler as well. Tan walls, very nice. So those are the bikes, but now it's up to you to decide which one is the best. And then as we've already said, the loser is going to ride a very cheap bike up one of the hardest hills in our area. Still fit in. Yeah, guys, yeah. <sighs> to get your votes in, there is a community poll post up right now. And next week, we're going to see how we got on on that bike. And as always, if you do have any questions, let us know in the comments and don't forget to like and subscribe. Yeah.